Hello developers, today we are going to be building a Web3 application using React TypeScript. This is a very simple random number generator applications tutorial I made for developers who wants to learn how to develop their Web3 applications using TypeScript. Without further ado, let's get started. If you are new here, I'm Alex and on Eat the Blog, we help Web2 developers transition into Web3. Hey guys, just want to quickly share with you that Julian is currently offering a 3 months mentoring program to help you learn Web3 development and find your first 6-figure job. The details is in the link down below. Feel free to check them out. The first thing that we are going to do is to create our smart contract. Let us create a folder inside of our project and call it smart contract. CD into the folder and then we are going to initialize a package.json file. Once that is done, we can install hardhat by typing npm i hardhat. Now we can create a hardhat project by typing mpx hardhat. Now choose the type of project you want to create. Since this is a video tutorial about TypeScript, obviously we are going to select create a TypeScript project options. We will leave the rest of the option at default by pressing enter. Now that our hardhat project has been created for us, we are going to need to install several dependencies. Luckily, with the new version of hardhat, we only have a few to install. Let's start by first installing hardhat toolbox. I'm going to copy and paste the dependency name in the hardhat.config file since I'm lazy to type it myself. So if you ever forget which dependency to install, you can just head to this file and copy and paste like what I did here. Finally, we just need to install one more dependency, which is the .env package. This will help us to set up our environment variables, which is extremely important if you do not want to accidentally share your sensitive information to the public. All right, we can finally get into the more interesting part, which is writing the smart contract. First of all, I'm going to delete the log.sol file and create a new file called random.sol. I'll be using Solidity version 0.8. Next, we can create our contract and name it random. We can then create a public variable type uin8 and call it random underscore number. Now, let us create our generate number functions, which will return a variable of type uin8. We are going to use several input to generate our random number. I'm going to first generate a hash value from a block. Then we are going to use the kachap256 hash functions that take in the block.timestamp, the hash value that we created earlier, and message.sender as the input. Now with the random number that we have generated, how can we use it? For example, I want to generate a random number from 1 to 20. We can do so by using a math operation called modulus. This will return us a balance less than 20. And since we wanted a number from 1 to 20, we can just add 1 here. Lastly, all we need to do is to return the number that we had generated. And that's all to it for our smart contract. Now, let us open up our deploy.ts file. You can see that we have been greeted with an error. We can easily solve this error by installing a package called at type slash node. If the error is still showing, you can try to restart your VS code. Now that the error is gone, we can remove all this code that we don't need. Then we are going to change the value to random with capital letter R. Since our smart contract does not take in any value, we can remove all this input from the deploy functions. We can also change this to random as well for consistency. And finally, we can remove all this and just key in smart contract deployed to our smart contract address. Now we can start working on our hardhat.config file. Before that, we have to set up our environment variables by first creating a .env file. Inside the file, we are going to store our private key information. If you do not know where to get your MetaMask private key, you can easily get it by pressing these three dots on the right corner and then click on account details followed by export private key. Enter your MetaMask wallet password and you will be presented with your private key. Copy and paste your private key here in the .ene file. 
I'm not going to do that for now since I do not want all of my money to be stolen. Next, let us set up our Alchemy API key. If you do not have an Alchemy account, you can create an account at their website. It will only take a couple of seconds. Once that is done, click Create App button and fill in the form. The most important part is choosing the network you want to deploy your smart contract to. Since I'm going to use the Gorli testnet, I'm obviously going to select Gorli network here. Click Confirm and press View key. Then copy the HTTPS link and paste them into the .ene file. Once we are done with setting up our environment variables, we can proceed to configure our hardhat.config file. First of all, let us import our .env slash config package. Then inside the config uh, variables, we can type in networks, which have a variable of the name of our testnet, which in our case is called Gorli. Inside the Gorli key is going to be an object with an URL, which will store the value of the alchemy API key from the .ene file. And Inside the object as well, we will also have an array of accounts which take our private key as the variables. You should be seeing this error which tells us that it expects a string as a value. One way we can solve this is by creating an if statement where if the private key is not equals to undefined, we will set it as the private key from our .ene file, else we are just going to set it as an empty string. Now that the error is gone, we are ready to deploy our smart contract to the Gorli network. Let us first compile our smart contract by typing mpx hardhat compile. I made a mistake here. I wasn't in the right folder. So make sure you run this from the right path. Now you see that we have successfully compiled our smart contract. Next, we can deploy by typing this in the terminal command. After a couple of minutes, you should see that we have successfully deployed our smart contracts to the Gorli testnet. Nice. I'm going to copy and paste the contract address here because we are going to need it later. Now we are ready to build our React applications. First of all, let us cd into our main project files and create a React TypeScript project by typing mpx create React app followed by our project name, which in this case is going to be called client followed by dash dash template TypeScript. Once the project has been created, we can cd into the client folder and try running our project by typing npm start. We should be seeing this in our browser. First of all, I'm going to remove all these files since we are not going to be covering testing in this tutorial. Obviously, we will have to fix some errors. So I'm going to remove all these codes and all these packages. Then let's go to our index.ts file and remove this code as well. Now inside our app.tsx file, let us create a h1 tag and key in hello TypeScript. And we should be seeing this in our browser. Now I'm going to show you how we can interact with our MetaMask using TypeScript. Let us first import the useState hook and create a variable called current account using useState. I'm going to change this to welcome to Gorli testnet random number generator. Then below our h1 tag, I'm going to create a button that says login metamask. Let us now create our connect wallet functions, which is going to be an asynchronous functions. Inside the functions, we are going to get the Ethereum variable from the window object. And you can see that we are now getting a type error. We can easily solve this by going to our react app.yeni file, then key in interface window with an Ethereum object that is of type any. Now the error is gone. We can continue with our functions by creating an if statement. So if there is an Ethereum variable, we are going to get our MetaMask account and set it to our current account variable. else it will return us an alert that says, please install MetaMask Wallet. And when we click our button, it should call the connect wallet functions. Then we will just display our current account inside a p tag. Now, 
let's open up our browser and when we click the login metamask we should be able to now get our metamask wallet address great since we have already connect to our metamask it doesn't make sense for us to show the button right so let us create an if statement that says if we have a current account then we are going to show this as our interface else we will show the login button and our greetings title back to our browser we should see that now it only display our wallet information next i'm going to wrap the p tag in an empty tag we can actually clean this up even more to make it easier to read by first creating a component folder inside the component folder we can create a login.tsx file i'm going to use the react snippet by typing rafce to quickly create a functional component then i'm going to cut all this code from here and paste it into our login components and import the components into our app.tsx file now the code is much cleaner but we are getting an error to fix this error we will have to pass in the connect wallet function as a prop and inside our login component we are going to destructure the props using the curly braces then we need to create an interface called props which consists of a functions called connect wallet now all we have to do is set the props to the interface props that we have declared and now the error is gone and everything is still working perfectly fine i'm going to remove everything from the app.css file and add my own css styles to the app.css file i have this project uploaded in my github pages feel free to get the css code from the github repo i'm not going to be going through the css code since it is going to take up quite some time once that is done i'm going to create a div with a class name navbar and move my p tag inside of the div tag then under this div tag we are going to create another div tag and give it a class name header followed by another div tag with a class name container inside this container we are going to create a button which we will call the generate number functions in our smart contract so let us first create our generate number functions we can finally start to connect our smart contract to our react applications first of all let us create a folder called lib and inside the folder we have another folder called abi and a constant.tsx file now let's go back to our smart contract project and we are going to copy the random.json file from there and create a copy inside of our abi folder then inside our constant.tsx file we are going to import the abi from the random.json file after that we can export the contract abi from abi.abi as well as the contract address which we have just deployed now let us open up the app.tsx file and import both the contract abi and contract address next i'm going to create a function called get random contract inside the function we will first destructure the ethereum variable from the window object next we will need to get our provider using the ethers package which we have not installed so let us go ahead and install the ethers library from our terminal then we can import them into our app.tsx file now we can create a provider by typing ethers.provider.web3provider which takes in the ethereum variables as the input next we are going to need to get the signer from the provider.getSigner method and finally we will be able to generate our contract by typing ethers.contract that takes in the contract address contract abi and signer as the input Once that is done, we can return the contract. Now back to the generate number functions, we have to first make it asynchronous. Inside the functions, I'm going to create a constant result, which is equals to await get random contract dot generate number. 
which is the name of the functions we created in our smart contract. Let's start up our React application and test if everything is working. When I press the generate number button, you can see that the MetaMask prompt us to confirm the transactions. Nice! The React application can now talk to our smart contract. However, we do not know what is the number that is generated. So let us create another asynchronous functions and call it initialize. We are going to also create a random number using the use state hook. Then inside our initialize functions, we are going to call our smart contracts to get the value of the random number variable in our contract. Then we can set the random number as the value of the random number we have created. Next, we can use the use effect hook to call the initialize functions on load. Finally, all we have to do is to display the random number inside a h1 tag inside of this div container. Now, let us test if everything is working fine. When we click the login MetaMask, we are able to now get the random number from our smart contract. Let us try to generate another random number and see. When the transaction is successful, we can see that nothing has changed. But when we refresh the window, we can now see that the number is being updated. One way we can make this better is by adding some changes to our codes. Inside the generate number functions, I'm going to type await result.wait. Then I'm going to call the initialize functions. Let us test if this is working. Now you can see that our value update without having us having to refresh the page. One more thing that we can do to make this even better is by having a loader while the transaction is being processed. I'm going to use the React Spinners library to quickly create a nice looking loader. Let us import the propagate loader from the React Spinners library. Then add the propagate loader component below the h1 tag and give it a color black and a size of 30. Next, we can create an is loading state and set the default value as false. Then we can set it to show our loader if the is loading value is true. And if it is false, we will show the random number inside of our smart contract. Let us go to our generate number function and set its loading to true at the beginning and set it back to false once all the code has been executed. Let's open up the browser and test it out again. You can see when we press the button, the loader will show and once the transaction is done, it will show us the new random number that is generated. And with that, we have come to the end of this video tutorial. I hope you find this tutorial useful and learn something from it. Oh, and don't forget, Julian is currently offering the three months mentoring program to help you guys master Web3, building your portfolio and assessing a network of like-minded developers. You can check out the details in the link down below. I shall see you again next time. Bye.